Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to replace the fuel injectors in your 2006 to 2011 Honda Civic, which are the 8th gen Honda Civics. Um, so in my situation, I ordered some um, refurbished fuel injectors on eBay and have them installed in my car right now. They ended up not working well, they threw a few check engine light codes. Um, so I had my original Honda OEM ones on hand and I actually sent them in to a company to have them professionally cleaned and replace the O-rings, the filters, and everything. So um, what I'm going to be doing today is uh, just replacing the Honda OEM ones back into my car so they work better and so my car can perform better. Um, <clears throat> and then for most people they'll have, or who want to do this job, uh, you'll have the Honda OEM ones in your car ready and it might be clogged up or they're not performing correctly. Uh, I highly recommend to have them sent in to be professionally cleaned. Um, it's just a lot cheaper than buying the Honda OEM ones because they run about 75 a pop so and you have to buy four of them so it can get pretty expensive so um, but uh, I mean if you want to go that way go that way so you can have brand new ones or in my case you know it's cheaper just to have them professionally cleaned and they'll and they work like new again so today's video I'll show you how to do that uh, from start to finish and one step I'm going to not show you is that <clears throat> it is highly recommended to remove the cowl cover it just because you need to work you know, you have hand room behind here, and as you can see, you just you don't have any hand room whatsoever. Uh, so it's highly recommended just to remove this cowl cover so you have plenty of hand room. I mean, I already did this job, and removing this cowl cover was easy, and it gave me so much hand room to get behind there. So um, I will not show you guys how to do that in this video, just because it adds... I mean, it's really not that long of a process. It's, you only need like a 10, 12 millimeter socket, and just removing a bunch of the plastic panels and the clips and stuff. But... I want to try and make this video as short as possible and just showing that step will just make the video a lot longer than I want to be so I will leave in the uh, description down below how to uh, or sorry I'll leave a video a link to a video to show you how to remove this it's very easy and um, so that way I can show you guys how to do the fuel injector part so uh, let me go remove this cowl cover and then we'll get started on how to remove the fuel injectors alrighty so we have removed the cowl cover which again very simple to remove it's just the metal part on the plastic piece it's just held in by a bunch of uh 12 10 millimeter bolts so um easy to remove now the first step into uh, replacing the field injectors so first thing you want to do is to remove the negative terminal from your battery because we're going to be disconnecting uh you know electrical connectors and we also want to make sure that the uh fuel pump is off and hopefully there's you know not a lot of uh, fuel pressure in the system and it's just best to have it off just be in case, uh, you know, anything shorts or whatever. So, or we want to have it off to prevent shorts. So, um, so the first part is here's this, uh, little white clip right here to remove. Uh, and this is the fuel rail, I believe, or the, it's part of the fuel rail. Um, and it is recommended to relieve the fuel pressure and they say to either, you know, remove the fuse, the fuel pump or to, um, yeah, do that. But I mean, it's not like you know, the fuel's gonna spray everywhere and stuff, you know, because when I did it the first time, it just kind of leaked out. So what you want to do is have uh, some paper towels kind of stuffed in, this, in these areas right here. Try just to get at least a little bit under it because um, some fuel will come out. So just be prepared for that. Um, but it won't, you know, again, it won't spray anywhere as far as I know because it didn't happen to me. So, you know, it's not that much fuel pressure built up in that area. So uh, we'll get this white clip off. All they do is really just use a flathead to push this little clip and then it'll kind of come up in this direction. So we'll go do that right now. Alrighty, so as you can see, um, you know, it came up in this direction. What I did was I just used two flatheads. I used one flathead to push back that little piece. I can't really see it right here. Let me see if I can pull it out. But then just put your flathead under that, kind of push it outwards, and then put your flathead probably right in this little area, and then just pry upwards. But again, be very careful because, you know, it's an old piece of plastic, so it can be pretty brittle. Um, so put that aside for now. And now what we'll do next is to relieve the, or take off the fuel line. And so these two green, green clips are here. It's pretty hard to squeeze out. Um, so there's one right in the top right here. And there's one at the very bottom, if you can see that. So you basically want to make a pinching motion like this. So again, it's very hard to like get your fingers under there. So I recommend wearing disposable gloves because the you know, fuel will come out. Uh, so just prepare for the fuel to come out. Let's make sure every paper towel is tucked under here, which I will do now. And then... Um, what you want to do is have one your left hand pinching those two green clips and then have your right hand on um, this side as well of the hose and just kind of 
you know, pull out that way. Alrighty, so we have removed the fuel hose. And uh, so for my situation, some fuel did kind of squirt out. I think it's because I just filled up my gas tank a few hours ago. So um, maybe I recommend doing this uh, when you have low fuel in the tank or if maybe your car's been sitting for a while and there's not much fuel pressure built up. But so what I did was I pulled that hose out, the gas squirted out, and then I put paper towel over it. And then what you want to do is when you grab this hose to have it keep it upright, you don't want to keep it you know down so more fuel come out. So just keep it upright, put a paper towel over it. Uh, just to, you know, absorb any fuel and then just kind of have it tucked under here so that way it's staying upright and the fuel will just, you know, it won't leak out and stuff. And then I also shoved a paper towel under here um, to uh, make sure that any fuel that might still come out will get absorbed. And so as you can see right here, there's two green, this green, sorry, green clip right here. Again, you just want to squeeze that and then grab that hose and then pull it out that way. So, um, so the next step we're going to do is to remove uh, these two, I believe these are two 10 millimeter bolts. Um, and we also want to remove this clip right here. I don't think it's exactly necessary, but it does kind of add um, some tension to this plastic cover we need to remove. So it's good just to remove this clip. Alrighty, uh, so I forgot to mention, so before you remove these 10 millimeter bolts, which I've already have done right here, and when you remove this connector right here. Uh, there's a fuel line cover right here that I forgot that you have to remove first. Um, the map sensor, which is right here, the line will be connected in here. So just take it out of that slot so it's free. And then this is kind of just held in by two rubber grommets. So you just want to get this removed by hand. You don't need that much um, pressure, or sorry, uh, strength to pull it out. As you can see, there's a little rubber grommet in there. It's just a little bit stuck. So you kind of, there you go, pops it out. So right there, right there, and this is the fuel line cover. So it's held in by these, um, actually three rubber grommets, sorry. So there's one right there, right there, and right there. So just use it, use it or sorry, pull it up by hand, just pull an upward motion. You don't need any force. And once you have that removed, then you can remove this clip, put the other bolts, and now we can have more access to the fuel line and We'll, uh, next step is to remove the four connectors to the fuel injectors. Alrighty, so now that we have removed the connectors from the fuel injectors, all four of them, you uh, pinch them from the side. See right here, so just pinch them, pull upwards. Again, be very careful doing that. And this whole entire, um, this is the rocker arm, will remove, uh, sorry, we'll go, come upwards. We're not going to remove it entirely, obviously, so we just need to push it out of the way like so. And then now we are going. We are going to be removing the uh, mounting bolts to the fuel rail. These are 10 millimeters, so uh, we'll remove that right now. Okay. So next up, I remove the two 10 millimeter bolts from there, put them aside, and then what you want to do is grab the fuel rail itself, pinch it from both sides, and then just slowly pull upwards while wiggling to get it out of those mounting bolts or the. Uh, yeah, bolts are, um, and then pull outwards, as you can see it's coming out, and then just be very careful because when you tilt this, there's going to be fuel in the fuel rail itself, so just try to be wary of this pipe right here, or try to keep it upwards, and then either, um, I have a fuel absorber, or sorry, yeah, liquid absorbent mat right here, so I'm going to place that down here, so either put on this kind of mat, put it on cardboard, it's something that's too... Um, that will absorb the uh, gas that's going to be trapped inside the fuel rail and it will leak out once you try to move it around and stuff. So make sure you have this all set and ready. Pull it out of your car and then place it on the mat. Okay, so next step when you have the fuel rail out and on either a cardboard, uh, or on cardboard, sorry, or a liquid absorbing mat, which I have both, uh, the next step is to remove these metal clips that are helping to hold in the fuel injector. There's four, so you want to take either, you can kind of do it by hand, if you have like, you know, fingernails to pull it out, or you can take a flathead and just pull them out. You can be very gentle with them, but um, they're pretty easy to remove. Um, and then once you do that, to remove the fuel injectors themselves, it's just basically just grabbing them by hand and pulling them out. You want kind of want to wiggle it as you're pulling outwards, and then have your right hand kind of pushing down the fuel injector, or the fuel rail, 
sorry, and just kind of pull it outwards like this in that uh, motion. And then they all should just wiggle out. And you want to do that for all four of them. Okay, so I have removed the old fuel injectors from the fuel rail, pull them out like I told you. They're over there, I also removed those metal clips, which they are easy to remove. You just kind of just cap the prior finger nail onto them and then just prime outwards and be careful because they will fling off and fly you know, everywhere. So just make sure you don't lose them. And I have installed my Honda OEM fuel injector. Again, I had mine professionally cleaned, tested, and the O-rings were removed, the filters removed. Um, or sorry, not removed, replaced, so everything's brand new. So uh, it's you know working like new again. And so a quick tip to get the fuel injectors um, in there, so I'll use an example for the old one. So when you install them in this orientation right here, the O-ring that's right here, you want to coat that with engine oil so that it, you know, smooth, because you have to kind of push it back in like so. And the uh, engine oil will just help it, you know, smooth in there, uh, sorry, slide in there smoothly. And also that helps prevent the O-ring from pinching because you don't want it to pinch in there. So you want it to be nice and smooth in there as well. So what I did was took some engine oil, put it into the cap, kind of just like dip my pinky finger in it, and then when you do that, or you can use like a Q-tip or whatever, just dip a little bit of oil, you only need a little bit, not a lot, and then just kind of coat the O-ring like this, and then you also want to do it for the top one as well, or sorry, actually, sorry, you want to coat this one first, and then that one will go into the uh, fuel rail itself, like so, and then you want to coat the top O-ring right here, or in this case, this one. Uh, with engine oil as well. Again, don't use a lot, just use a very little bit. So that way, you know, everything just kind of just, the engine oil helps everything just slide right in smoothly. So I uh, do that for our all four um, of the fuel rail holes and get all the injectors in there. Make sure they're nice and tight and basically you just want it to look like this. Uh, when you push in the fuel injector, it should kind of like clip in, like you'll kind of feel, you know, get in there tight and sealed. And you want to make sure this black clip is, you know, right in the middle, like so. And make sure that the clip looks like this. So make sure that that metal part's sticking out right here. And then the same thing for the other side. And just want to just eye it and just make sure everything looks, you know, nice and straight, like so. And again, do this for our all four of the fuel injectors, and then you should be good to go to reinstall. So we have all four fuel injectors back installed. The metal clips back in there. So again, just make sure your setup looks like this. Clips have, or sorry, clips look like that. Make sure those little metal kind of grommets go in between the clips so it's nice and secure, as you can see. And now we're going to just basically do reverse order and just remove, or sorry, reinstall this back to the car. Um, and so I'll do this right now. I won't show you that part, but I'll just put it back in, uh, put the mounting bolts through those two holes, uh, get the nuts back in there and uh, we'll continue from there to complete this job. Also, sorry, before I forget, make sure you coat these O-rings with engine oil as well. Again, you only need a very small amount. Okay, so I have installed the fuel rail back into my car. I already put the uh, nuts back on. I've, I've been calling these bolts the whole time, so I have the nuts back in there, tightened down. So how to install the fuel rail back in, again, just kind of Kind of like how you just take it out. Same way putting it back in. Make sure all the fuel injectors go back into the holes into the engine right there. And then once everything's kind of just aligned up and you know seated down, it won't fully seat down until you actually push it in. So just make sure that you know it goes these holes go through the bolts, the mounting bolts, everything's nice and straight, everything looks good. And then you want to take your left hand, push down the left side until you hear the fuel rail actually pop in. And then do the same side, or sorry, same thing for the right side. Push down, it'll pop in. And then just, you know, everything will be fully seated in. And then just, you know, inspect the fuel injectors themselves. Make sure that, you know, there's no, you know, everything looks in there nice and tight. You know, the seals are kind of crimped or sticking out. So everything looks seated in there for mine. So just, you know, double check everything looks good. And then put those 10 millimeter nuts back in there right here. And then the, the torque spec for these are 16 foot pounds. Um, I just did it by hand because again, these are very you know, skinny bolts, mounting bolts. You definitely don't want to over tighten it, you know, thread or, you know, cross thread the nut or um, 
you know, over tighten the bolt and then have it snap. So, so I mean, again, if you have a, a digital torque wrench um, or any kind of torque wrench and it's 16 foot pounds for these two 10 millimeter nuts, or if you just do it by hand, just do it very, you know, just do it snug. Don't over tighten it. Don't, you know, force it because these are very delicate mounting bolts. So uh, I'll do that. Next step is to um, get this arm back into place, reconnect the connectors to the fuel injectors. You just gotta push down, you'll hear a click. Do that for all four. Alrighty, so I have that control arm back in, so all of the connectors are back in there. So again, just you know, push them in, you'll hear them click. Do that for all four. Get this other connector back in right here, snap that in. And then take the two 10 millimeter bolts, get those back in, tighten them down. Just tighten them down to snug, don't want to do it over tight. And then now we will grab our uh, fuel rail cover back in. Or sorry, grab it and put it back in, sorry. So again, these three little rubber grommets. And then you have to line up to the three holes that are right here. So, as you can see, Line that one up, line this one up right there, and that one right there. And once you get that back on, take this line from the map sensor, snap that back in, and then we'll continue from there. Alrighty, so everything is back in, that plastic cover pop back in, very easy. And so the very last step is to grab the fuel hose, uh, connect it back into here, make sure the clips are kind of facing upwards like this. So that one's at the top, one's in the bottom. And then you just kind of just push them together with both your hands until you hear a click. And then we will put back that white little piece back on. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so grab the fuel hose, push it back in. And when you push it back into the green little part, you will hear a click. So that means you know it's in there nice and tight. Again, some more fuel might leak out, so just be careful about that. I have paper towel ready. Now we will grab white part and you want to go in back like this way so the way I did it last time is you kind of want to have it like this go over that little pipe right there and then clamp down like this and there you go so everything's just aligned up all right so we are pretty much all set with the job Next step you want to do is to reconnect the negative terminal back into your battery and then what we'll do is we'll check for leaks. So you want to go into your car, turn the ignition, don't turn your car on, but just turn the ignition to the, I believe it's the second position and the third position. Let the um, fuel pump turn on, let, you know, let it build up pressure and stuff and then come back to your engine bay, check for any leaks for primarily here and just make sure everything looks good. Alrighty, so I reconnected my negative terminal. I have my car on, it's, I got it in the Second position, um, and I checked everything, everything looks good, no fuel leaks, nothing going on down there, as far as I can see, so uh, seems like everything was a success, and last step is to install back the cowl cover, which again, I will not show you, but again, check the description down below, there'll be a link to a video how to uh, remove and install it, and then you should be all set, and then that's how you replace the uh, fuel injectors in a Honda Civic or 8th gen Honda Civic. Again, this applies to 2006 through 2011 Honda Civics. Um, and uh, hopefully this video helped you guys. Please leave a like, comment down below. And uh, again, hopefully you found this video helpful. And um, see you guys next time.